Hello, 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 and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we are going to examine your spiritual trust foundation. Listen, it is so essential as Christians that we know the stability of the foundation for which we are building on. When we don't know whether or not we are stable in God, when the weights and storms of life come crushing down on us, we will be moved. But it's time for us now to examine our spiritual trust foundation. I pray that this video blesses you in a mighty way. Stay until the end. We are going to be talking about examining your spiritual foundation of trust. We're going to wrap up the study on trust by examining your spiritual foundation. If you see me looking down, it's because I have my handy dandy notebook here and I also have my Bible. Um, and so I want to make sure that I'm reading the word of God to you. And without further ado, I'm Shaiteria Jones and I help powerful Christian women take what they've learned in the Bible and apply it to everyday life so that they can be successful in all that they do. And I do that by helping them to overcome fear, to receive healing and deliverance from past hurts and pain, as well as uncovering patterns that hinder destiny. Each and every one of us have a destiny in Christ Jesus, and he wants to see you fulfill that destiny. But throughout life, there are things that have come against us that kind of shift us from the path that God wants us on. And so I'm here to help with course correction. I'm a, a coach who understands what it's like to be broken. I am a coach who understands what it's like not to know God and not to understand the word of God. I'm a coach who has lived life in the world and now I'm living my life in the kingdom. And so that is why I do these teachings. I do these teachings because I want to open um, up those things that have been hidden to the body of Christ, those things that the enemy does not want us to know about. Um, and so I help you apply the word of God to your everyday life. And so we're going to examine your spiritual foundation of trust. And so we're going to do that. If you don't have a piece of paper, please get a piece of paper and a pen because you're going to want to write this stuff down because this is your opportunity to examine your spiritual foundation. I've already examined my spiritual foundation. The Lord had me do that several years back. Um, it would not be wise or honest or integral of me to get on here and teach you the subjects that I'm teaching without having first served in that capacity myself. And so everything that I bring to you, every lesson, lesson that I teach to you, God has taken me through that lesson myself. And so that's why I'm qualified to sit here across from you and talk to you about your spiritual foundation of trust. Because all of us will at some point or another have to figure out whether or not we really trust the God that we serve. And when we figure out whether we really trust him, it's going to change the trajectory of our lives. I was living in a place where I didn't trust God and didn't know I didn't trust him. And that's a really difficult position to be in. You're in a relationship with someone and you don't trust them. Uh, being connected to Jesus Christ is a relationship. So I teach people how to live in relationship and not in religion. Religion keeps us bound. Relationships offer freedom. So the relationship with Jesus Christ offers us freedom. And so I want to, us today to examine our spiritual foundations. So the first question that I had to you know, pose to myself or um, that you have to pose to yourself today. And I've already gone through this. But the first question that I had to pose to myself was, why did I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? So I'm posing that question to you. Why did you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? And so I'm going to walk you through um, every question that I ask you. I'm going to go through what... Um, my answers are so that you can understand and experience what it's like to do this breakdown to really see where your trust level lies. Um, now, at the time, uh, this for me was over several years period of time where I was able to examine this. Um, and then God was like, okay, we got to put this into practice because you, 
I don't want you to be an, a, a bobblehead, okay? You can't be a bobblehead Christian. Today you serve me, tomorrow you're not. No, I need you to be steadfast and immovable. And when God taught me to be unshakable, it was uh, for me an emotionally uh, trying time because I was like, what does that even mean? I thought I would like, huh? I don't even know. Taloka. Like I was, I was done. And he was like, I need you to be unshakable. And I said, okay, I will be unshakable, but I don't even know what it means. So he took me through some phases and some stages and some great daddy daughter talks. And it was amazing. Um, and now I'm a warrior for, for God. Okay, honey. I will tear some stuff up. Before I was a little bit weak. I, I was all the way weak. And didn't even know I was weak, honey. I was anemic in the spirit. And didn't know I needed um, the Holy Ghost, honey. So, okay. So, the first question is, why did you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? So, I accepted him um, as Lord and Savior because I felt like I was missing something. I was coming out of a really bad relationship. Um, and I was just broken. I was sad. I was, uh, all kind of messed up. And, um, I ended up going to church and I didn't like church. P.S. Just the FYI. I didn't like it. And when I went, I was like, I'm just coming here for this day. That's it. I'm not about to play with these people up in this church. Um, and the, the, the pastor at that church, he gave the altar call and I, I did not feel like I was moving, but my body was moving to the altar. And so I gave my life to Jesus Christ because I was missing something. I was broken and I needed to be fixed. And, and he had something that I needed. Um, I, I didn't plan on changing my life to be with Jesus. Let me just take that. No, no, no. I was coming to Jesus as I was, and I wanted him to fix what was broken and then send me back out so I could do what I wanted to do. I didn't want to um, hand over my sins. I just wanted to be me and just hang out and just do what I do. So I, I didn't expect to be changed by God. I just expected to be forgiven of my sins. And so... I couldn't identify exactly what it was about him, but I was like, I need to, I need to hang out with him. He's pretty cool. He seems like he's a nice guy. I'm talking about Jesus. He seems like he's nice and he looked like he got something that, that can really help me. So that brings me to my first scripture. Hebrews eleven six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews eleven six. So, when I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I believed that he was real. I believed that he existed and that he had something that I needed. Even from a young child, like we would read the Bible and we would go to church and stuff, but I didn't accept him as a child. I was 19 when I accepted Jesus, but I still didn't know anything um, about him or about changing or about um, any of the things that I know now. I just knew, okay, I know he's real. Like there was, there was never a doubt in me that he wasn't real. I knew he was real. But now I was like, okay, we can just, you know, we can hang out. I'm not going to change anything about me, but I'd like to hang out if, if you want to hang out with me. And he's so great because he knew he had me, honey. He knew he had me at that moment um, because he was going to love me like I had never been loved before. And because I had never been loved that way, he knew I'd never leave him. So... Um, the next question is, why did you start following Jesus Christ? So the first question was, why did you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And the next one was, why did you start following him? Why did you start following Jesus Christ? And so, um, the reason I started following Jesus Christ, and we're talking about examining your spiritual foundation of trust, because all of these things that I'm covering today, 
add or are important components to building spiritual trust. And if you lack any one of these, you're not going to fully trust in God. So I started following Jesus uh, because I joined the church. And I didn't know I joined the church. I was like, I'm just going to this church for this one day and then I'm never coming back. Um, but God had other plans. So I joined this church and I started learning about tithing. And I was like, okay, so I'm supposed to tithe. Okay, that's pretty cool. And I didn't. Um, I didn't have an issue with tithing. Like, I wasn't really tied to my money. And I had my own apartment at the time. I was living on my own. I had to pay my own bills. Like, I had to buy food with my money. Like, it was, I was in a whole adult. I was a whole adult. Okay. And so, when I heard about tithing, I was like, okay, that's cool. I'll give, I'll just give God my money. <laughs> um, and every week I would tithe, I would tithe. And I was so blessed. Like I didn't miss anything. And when in those moments where I thought I wasn't gonna make it, Daddy got swooped in and he he just blessed your girl. He blessed me because I would be looking at my checks like I worked 24 hours this week and I'm making seven something an hour. The devil is a liar. I don't know how much I was making, but it wasn't anything. But God bless me. No, no, no. Yeah, when I first... No, 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 no. When I came to Jesus, I ended up getting a raise or something. But yeah, so I, I started tithing, and I just... I would either get a raise every year, or I would get a promotion, or a promotion and a raise. So I was like, oh... Jesus could have my money. So he had me at the money jump immediately because I saw with tithing as soon as I became a Christian, like, this, I'm getting mad money even though I'm giving out. It's not even making no sense. But it don't have to make sense to get me no money. So I'm just going to keep doing it. So I was hooked. I was hooked on following Jesus because I was like, he getting me some more money, honey. You all you had to do was say money and I come running. Um, and then there was a point where I was, so I told you I first met Jesus because I was in a bad relationship. I was, I was coming out of a bad relationship. And so I had so much emotional turmoil. And this is, you know, a progression of years. Um, I had so much emotional turmoil that I wanted to end my life. And so I was sitting... And on my couch in my apartment at the time. And I was thinking to myself, I could take some pills and this would all be over and I will be just fine. And the spirit of the Lord embraced me. And I felt so much love that it just changed my whole perspective and changed my whole life. Um, and I... That kept me following him because I was like, oh my goodness, I've never been loved like that before. Like, really? There's someone out there in this world who loves me like that? Which means, brings me to my second scripture. Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Jeremiah 31, 3. And I knew in that moment that I was loved. I was like, oh, well, now I'm going to go eat some pizza. So I went from wanting to end my life to wanting to feed myself so that I could live life. And so that's why I started following him. So we're talking about examining your spiritual foundation of trust. First, you've got to figure out why you accepted him as Lord and Savior. Second, why did you start following him? And then thirdly, when did you decide you weren't going to leave him? Because every Christian needs to make that decision of, I'm not going to leave him. But there are different things that cause us to make that decision. We're talking about examining your spiritual foundation of trust. And so, when I started reading his word, I was hooked. I was like, I can't leave this man. Like, his word is so cool. 
and I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how to apply it or get any benefits from it. But just reading it made me feel better. Like it was just really cool to read his word. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do that. So the way I started reading God's word was the church I was going to at the time always did a 40-day fast um, leading up to Easter. And the first couple of times that they did it, I was like, I won't be doing that. I need to eat. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what they trying to do, but I'm going to eat me some food. So I was talking to the pastor at the time. And he was like, you don't have to, you know, necessarily give up food. You're just, you're sacrificing something. And in its place, you read the word of God. So I said, okay, you know, I can give up TV. No problem. I'll give up TV for 40 days. And I love them ratchet good shows, you know, just ratchet city. Um, love and hip hop, the housewives, like those were my shows. Married to Medicine. I haven't watched TV in a really long time, but those were my shows. And um, I gave up watching TV and I replaced that time with reading the word. And when the 40 days were over, I never went back to TV. It was like I didn't need it anymore. I had something that was much better than this television. I had the word of God. And it was feeding me in ways that I didn't realize I needed to be fed. So um, I read it and I just kept reading his word. Which leads me to, uh, leads me to my third scripture. On the 668, then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. John 6, 68. When I began to read the word of God, I made the decision then that I can't leave him because where would I go? Who would I turn to? Who has this kind of um, information and insight for me? I never met anybody with this kind of information. Now, I didn't understand the word of God. But it filled me in a way where I knew I need this word. I have to have it. Um, so we covered why you accepted Jesus Christ. When you started following Jesus Christ, because those are two different things. When you decide that you weren't going to leave him. And then fourthly. When and how did you discover God as Father? Because this is a key component to the foundation of trust. Um, because when we don't know him as Father, we can't really trust him. And often there are things in this life that cause us not to trust God. And so I knew how to trust God partially in the area of my finances because he has shown himself faithful when I was continually tithing. So my money kept growing. So I said, okay, I can tithe. So I knew how to trust God with tithing because I had saw the results. But when I discovered God as father, it took me from just trusting him with my tithe money to trusting him with my entire life. So I trust him with children. I trust him, you know, I just trust him with everything. Um, but before there were areas of my life where I was like, mm -mm, I need to take care of this because you might not know what you're doing. And so for me, I had to learn him as father to be able to fully relinquish control and be like, okay, I think you can handle this. I think the God who made the heavens and the earth can take care of little old me. <laughs> but I had to come to that place where I knew him as father to be able to accept kept him taking care of me. So in 2007, God began to deal with my heart issues, okay? Um, I prayed some prayers that invited him into my situation because what prayer does is it's an invitation for God to step in. And so I invited him into my situation and he started to move some things and shake some things and I was like, whoa, what is going on? But I, am, I invited him into my life. And as he began to shift things and expose things, he showed me my heart towards him. Um, it was the best prayer that I ever prayed. Because from that prayer, a warrior was born. I would not know who I was in Jesus Christ had I not gone through my crisis. Um, 
he showed me that he was there for me and that the ideas and the perspective that I had about him before were incorrect. And he began to purify my heart and purify my motives and just expose to me the things that were in my heart so that I could deal with them. And he would help me along the way to deal with those things. Um, so knowing God as Father has changed my outlook on life. It's changed my outlook on God. It's changed my outlook on the kingdom of God. It's changed my outlook on myself. And it's changed my outlook on those around me. <clears throat> so my fourth scripture John 1 12 but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name John 1 12 I am now a son of God and can I tell you that's my favorite role that's my favorite position is to be a son I love when my dad calls me daughter. I know you're probably like, ma'am, you said son, but you said daughter. I know it's both. So <laughs> obviously I'm a girl. So I'm his daughter, but uh, in, in the word of God, it talks about sons because sons get inheritances. And in, in the Bible, in the scripture, in Christ Jesus, there's neither male nor female, Jew nor Gentile, um, which means that when he refers to me as son, he's just talking about me as his child. But when he speaks to me, he does call me daughter, uh, which is really cool. I love being called daughter by God. It's like, it just melts my heart. It's like the, fa it's my favorite thing. Um, we, he doesn't have to call my name. He just his daughter and I just melt um, but knowing him as father has just changed my whole perspective and it has ushered me into his presence in ways that I didn't even know were possible um, and so th so those are the things that cause you to have a, a strong foundation and and when we lack any one of those things in our foundation we can't fully trust God so Every one of those layers are necessary. All right. So you think you trust God. There are going to be tests that come to test you to see if you really, really trust God. And you've got to pass those tests. So um, there are going to be situations that arise that where you have to know. And it's going to expose your heart. It's going to expose your heart to you because God already knows what's in your heart. And um, if you pass the heart test, you can rejoice and seek the face of God. And if you fail the heart test, you can rejoice and seek the face of God. You can rejoice if you, if you fail the heart test because you have another opportunity to pass it. All you have to do is seek the Father. And he'll show you the things that need to be changed in you so that you can be who he's called you to be in him there is now no condemnation he's not going to berate you or spit on you or do any of those things that uh, we would expect someone to do in their disappointment hopefully we don't expect people to spit on us but um he's not going to do those things he's going to stand with his arms out as a good father and say come on my lap and talk to me Talk to me about what you're feeling. Talk to me about what you're thinking. And let me show you who I am. Oftentimes we have this perverted view of God as Father. Because our mothers mistreated us. Or our fathers mistreated us. Or those who had guardianship over us mistreated us. And we had to protect us. And we had to show people that we were important. For a long time... I had this issue where I didn't value people. <clears throat> I was very critical and very judgmental. And if you didn't get something right, I was like, okay, get your life. You should have got that right. And God examined me and he, he exposed my heart. He turned it inside out and he showed me that, first of all, I didn't love myself. And because I did not love myself, I couldn't love anyone else. And I couldn't truly love him as father. 
So he began to do some heart work on me. And honey, I have a heart for the people that I've never had before. And I see things about people that I couldn't see before. Um, he purified me in such a way that even when things are going wrong, I'm still like, oh, wait, but look how cool this person is and look at what they did. And, I, and now I can see really great things. But before, I was, I was full of the devil, full of brokenness, full of hurt, full of pain, and I couldn't see. And so when God turned me inside out and said, look at this, and he would just point out those things to me, not in a belittling way, but in a way that says, you're better. I've already purified you. Step into your glory. And so you get an opportunity to spend time with the Father. You get an opportunity to let him work out your faith with you with fear and trembling. Um, Joseph is an example of a man of integrity, a man that while he was going through his trials and his tests, honored God. Which brings me to my fifth scripture, Psalm 105, 19. Until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Psalm 105, 19. And this Psalm in the previous verses is talking about Joseph. And Joseph was sold into slavery. He was tried on trumped up charges and thrown into prison, honey. Um, but then he was exalted from the prison to the palace because he trusted God, because he allowed the word of God to try him. Because when negative situations arose, he said, I'm the, the God of the Hebrews is my God and I will not be moved. And so your spiritual foundation of trust will change your life. And you have got to really examine all four of these areas so you can see which one of them is the weakest. And generally, it is the area of sonship where we struggle. Because when we accept Jesus Christ, you don't accept someone that you really don't believe to be God. Um, when you start to follow him, it's because you have this, your interest is peaked. Um, when you decide you're not going to leave him, you got to make sure your heart is right. So it's a heart issue when you decide whether or not you're going to leave him and when you don't have his father. So spend some time in those areas and, and figure that out because that's going to shift your life in ways that you never know. Powerful woman, what did you learn about your spiritual trust foundation? Comment below. I would love to hear from you. But if it's too personal, just leave me a comment that says, this blessed me in a mighty way. It will encourage me. I'll see you in another video. Bye.